Hi, and welcome to the 10 square meter workshop. Last time I built my cannon barrel. Now it's on to the next step of the project. The barrel was, of course, very much a metalworking job. But this time, it's a much more woodworking. The wheels, enough to strike terror into the hearts of a metal worker. But I will be taking a more engineering approach to making these. I shall start by making the six outer rim parts, known as fellows. First thing I'll need for making these is a jig to hold the wood in place. I'm cutting this out of 18mm ply. And first I need to mark out a circle 100mm in diameter and divide it up into six. Memories of school geometry here. This was then cut out roughly on the bandsaw. I then drilled an 8mm hole through some 20mm aluminium bar. 20mm because that's the largest ER32 collet I have. I then parted it off. With the addition of an 8mm hole through the wood, I could bolt the assembly together. The jig was then fitted in a hex collet. This allows me to machine the outside accurately on all six faces. I shall do this with a 25mm surfacing cutter. I cut all six faces to an estimated height. That allowed me to measure it and calculate the correct height. Time to prepare the material. With the blade set at 30 degrees, two pieces were cut without moving the fence to make sure they're the same size. I then trimmed each piece in the mill for better accuracy and finish. All six parts had a clearance hole drilled. The parts were then all screwed to the jig ready for turning. First job as always is facing off. After facing off and cleaning up the next step is to turn the inside to 101 millimeters, And that's where we are here. Time for the outside. With the outside turned, I'm going to take it out of the lathe to put further features in the fellows. With it mounted once again in the hex collet, I fitted a depth stop for registration in preparation to cut the first feature, which is a tenon slot between the fellows. This was made with a 2.5mm slot cutter. I am, of course, making the fellows for both wheels together. One on the outside, one on the inside. And these are the slots for both of them. Just five more to do. With all the tenons cut, I can think about the spokes. These actually travel right through the rim, so I can drill them from the outside. There are two holes for spokes on each fellow. I'm going to plunge cut these with a 4mm slot cutter. This is the same procedure. Cut two holes, then rotate through 60 degrees using the collet holder. With that done, it means when I part off these sections, all machining will have been done. Before turning off, I've attached gaffer tape to the outside. I don't want them flying off. Here we go. Let's hope this doesn't get exciting. coming off and causing damage, I'm going to finish the last half a millimetre with a Japanese saw.
and she comes with a bit of cleaning up that's the rim parts made which I shall resist from calling jolly good fellows before I could make the hub or nave I had to make the bands that hold it together I turned these out of my steel bar before fitting these would be called blued as you can see on the right for the naves I shall be using maple elm is more traditional but I believe the closer grain of maple will be more suitable for this maple is a lovely wood to turn in a lathe with a rounded tool it gives a good finish even with quite aggressive cuts turn down to 29.8 try doing that in a wood lathe and we're all ready to put in the features with the two knaves turned it's time to put the slots in for the spokes I shall be cutting the mortises for the spokes in the mill on a rotary table first I centralized the nave in the turntable I then centralized the spindle using dowels I am now ready to cut a mortise two millimeters and traverse again three passes and the first mortise is done just got replete 11 times and after some time spent turning wheels I have the 24 mortises cut. The spokes were cut by CNC from oak. Of course, after all, there's 24 of them. Here's the first 12. Of course, you only CNC one side, so it needs machining of both tenons. I therefore made these small jigs to hold them in the mill while doing this. These allow repeatable machining of the spoke end. Passing both sides, I can make sure I have an accurate 4mm tenon. The rounding of the end of the tenon to match the mortise I'm doing by hand, sort of carving. It would require an awful lot of setting up to do that in the mill. And here's the test fit of the first one. Only another 23 to go. After whittling the tenons on the spokes to fit the mortises, this is the first fit. There'll be some adjustment required but I want to shape the spokes first. A bit of whittling and sanding turns the square spoke on the left into a shaped one. The wheel is now ready for the small tenons to be fitted into the rim. I shall be gluing these in. The only place on the wheel where there'll be any glue. I want the rest to be able to move. With the tenons glued, the wheel is clamped flat to set. And so here it is in the white before I apply some Danish oil. The rims were of wrought iron so I shall be using my half mill steel sheet. The tyre rim was not made in one piece as is common but in six pieces which were then nailed to the rim. Cut to six and a half millimetre width and then cut to length. Carefully trimmed for width these are the six pieces. These could then have one millimetre holes, four of them at each end for the nails, and then countersunk. Cold blue could then be applied and washed off so they're ready for fitting. To make attaching these easier, I've made a last to hold in the lathe. With the strip held in place by tape, here are the first four nails in. With the strips on, I believe they were called strikes. It's time to give it a finish. 
Given a coat of Danish oil, I have a finished wheel. Just got to do the other one. And on that topic, here's one I made later. Well, that was an engineer's approach to woodwork. I hope you found it interesting and maybe a bit intriguing. That's all for this time. See you next time.